in Europe at a later time, a few days later. His plan was to take another ship. About four days into the crossing of the Atlantic, the ship they were on collided with a powerful, iron-hulled Scottish ship. Suddenly, all of those on board were in grave danger. Anna hurriedly brought her four children to the deck. She knelt there with Annie, Margaret Lee, Bessie, and Tanetta, their children, and prayed that God would spare them if that could be his will, or make them willing to endure whatever came their way. Within approximately 12 minutes, their ship slipped beneath the dark waters of the Atlantic, carrying with it 226 of the passengers, including the four children of the author of the song. A sailor rowing a small boat over the spot where the ship went down spotted a woman floating on a piece of the wreckage. It was Anna still alive. He pulled her into the boat and they were picked up by another large vessel, which nine days later landed them in webs. From there she wired her husband a message which began, Saved alone, what shall I do? Mr. Spafford later framed his telegram and placed it in his office. Another of the ship's survivors, a preacher named Weiss, later recalled Anna saying, God gave me four daughters. Now they have been taken from me. Suddenly, or someday, I will understand why. Mr. Spafford booked passage on the next available ship and left to join his wife. With the ship about four days out, the captain called Spafford to his cabin and told him they were over the place where his children went down. According to Bertha Spafford, a daughter who was later born to the family, Spafford wrote, It is well with my soul on this journey. His wife Anna later, later gave birth to three more children, one of whom also died of pneumonia. In August 1881, the Spaffords moved to Jer Jerusalem. Mr. Spafford died and is buried in that city. How did this man find the courage to write a, to write a song with the title, It is well with my soul? After losing two sons to pneumonia and four daughters in a shipwreck, you know that he had trouble finding any peace at all. I think I would lose my mind. I just have one kid, and if something happened to her, I don't know what I would do. I can only imagine the trauma this put him and his wife through. I can imagine that they really struggled with the question, with questions like, "Is God really there? And if He is, does He does He love me?" Why would he do this to us? I think we can see what a lot of his thoughts were and who he trusted through this song that he wrote, It Is Well With My Soul. Now that we know the story behind the song, let's look at the words to the song. Verse 1. <clears throat> when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul. That's awesome lyrics, especially knowing the story behind why he wrote that. Remember the same men that went through these great tragedies wrote these words. When peace like a river, that's the good times. These are the times when we are on the mountain and everything is great. Isn't it really easy to trust God when we're in this place, when we're on the mountain? And then he says, when sorrows like sea billows roll, of course, these are the bad times. These are the valleys when we come off the mountain. When we or someone close to us might be going through the valley of the shadow of death, like we read about in Psalm 23, these are the times that it takes strong faith to continue to trust in God. These are the times, like this author was going through, when it's easy to say, why is this happening to me? Or, or is God really there and doesn't love me? In, in Psalm 23, we see King David say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. We need to always rely on God to get us through those bad times. He will see us through both the good times and the bad, the mountains and the valleys. In Philippians 4 and verse 6, we're told, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. That's sometimes easier said than done. We always need to remember that He is with us no matter what. We should tell us our problems and let Him work them out. 
Verse 2 of the song. This is, this is my favorite verse. My sin, oh the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part but the whole, is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I love to sing It Is Well With My Soul right before the Lord's Supper because of this verse. It says it so well. It says so much. The author here has switched his thoughts to the idea that he is a sinner. But because of the cross, he has been made whole again. He says, my sin, what a great thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole. Not just part, but all of it. All of his sin and all of our sin. It is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. He praises the Lord for taking his sin to the cross. It seems this truly was well with his soul. I love to hear us singing the songs and praising God for taking our sins to the cross. It's great right before the Lord's Supper. We see this in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that Jesus did take our sins. It says, He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. That we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. <laughs> In the very last verse of the song. <clears throat> and Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be silent. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. I think we have some revelation imagery here. This verse is a verse that we don't sing as much as we do the other two, or at least I don't. I sing the first two because they fit with the Lord's Supper a lot. I can really see Mr. Spafford writing this verse in all of his troubles. And Lord, haste the day when the faith shall be stopped. He's saying, please hurry up and come back. He's talking to Jesus. Come back and get us. How often do we think about this? For the Christian, this is our ultimate hope. This is when we will rise up from our graves. I've read several articles recently that instead of focusing on heaven being our ultimate goal, they're trying to focus on having a resurrected body as our ultimate hope and living in heaven. Not just going to heaven, but what it really means for us to be resurrected. I also love the idea of our faith becoming our sight. Here on earth, all we have is our faith. We haven't seen anything yet. Hebrews 11 and 1 tells us, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, and the conviction of things not seen. On that day, we will no longer need our faith. I know that sounds crazy, but our faith is what we haven't seen yet. Our faith will be what we see on that day. It will be happening right before our eyes. Right now, we can only look to that day and have faith that those things are there. But on that day, we will need our faith. We'll be there. It will be our eyes. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18, we see this great day that we will one day see with our own eyes. Let's read that now. But we do not want you to be informed, uninformed brothers about those who are asleep, that's those who are dead, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word from the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will not receive those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. The author was looking to this day, and it was well with his soul. I hope that's well with our soul. He was very much okay with it. He 
He knew that we would overcome death, and that made him okay. I hope we look forward to it as much as the author of this song did, and it seems that the early church did. Paul told the Thessalonians not to grieve for those who have died, as others who died, or as others who did, who did not have that hope. They were told to comfort one another with these words. Sometimes I worry that we fear that day instead of a comfort by it. I know that it's sad when someone dies or when we're in a low place in that valley. But we just need to think about the great hope that we have. It should be well with our souls. Everything will end up okay in the end, no matter what happens here. This morning, do you have peace like a river? Or are you in the place where sorrows like sea billows are rolling? Wherever you are in life, let it be well with your soul. I know that's something that I need to work more on, for sure. We like to fix our own problems. But don't do that. Let God help you. Today, if you haven't become a Christian by putting your hope in Christ, trusting in Him, Please do that today. Putting your faith in Him, showing the world that you trust Him by being baptized, letting Him come make you a new creation. If you are a Christian and you've lost this hope, please come home and let Jesus give you back. If things that are happening in your life are not well with your soul, trust in Christ so it can be well with your soul. Let Him give you that peace. Let Him give it back. Let Him get you back where you need to be. If you have any other need this morning, we love you and we want to help you. Please come while we stand and sing. <laughs> when peace like a river
Please come back anytime you can. At this time, we'll be led in our closing prayer. Our Father in heaven, we're thankful for all the many blessings of life you've given to us. We're thankful for this opportunity that we've had together here as Christians and sing songs of praise and worship you. We pray that each of us will take something <coughs> from the lessons that Zach's brought today, apply to our lives so we can be better Christians and better examples for those around us. Father, we're special thankful for your son and his sacrifice on the cross and the hope that he gives us. Father, we pray a special prayer for the military men and women. We pray that you'll bring them home safely as soon as possible. Pray for those that have been mentioned sick, those that lost loved ones. We pray that you'll comfort them as only you can. Father, as we're about to leave this place, we pray that you'll forgive us of our sins as we repent of them, and if we're found faithful in the end, give us a home with you in heaven. Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Good. 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 Good.